Welcome back. The infighting within the ANC at provincial level is threatening governance, especially in KwaZulu-Natal. The same has been seen in the Northwest and is likely to be seen in other places. The ANC was unable to hold its provincial conference in the KwaZulu-Natal this past weekend, and it appears it will not be able to do so anytime soon. To discuss the impact of this infighting is Sowetan political news editor Muipone Malefane. Aus Muipone, pleasure as always talking to you, and thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, <coughs> KZN, a task team was put in place to prepare for the elective conference that was supposed to be held this past weekend. There was a court interdict, and delegates pitched up, but the conference ultimately never materialized, not necessarily because of the interdict per se, but because of what happened at this, this conference. This infighting that's going on within the ANC is taking place currently in KwaZulu-Natal, but the same may be said about the other places. But let's focus on KZN at this time. What do you think is going on, and how is this issue going to be resolved? I think there are several factors. <coughs> One of the factors that were clear over the weekend is that KZN ANC doesn't have branches. If it had functioning branches, the, the interdict by the six members of the ANC would not have been successful. The day before the conference started, which started on Friday and collapsed on Friday night, Sikhlesi uh, Galala, who was head of um, PTT, the provincial task team, they held a press conference with some NEC um, people that were there in KwaZulu Natal preparing for conference. And they stated that three of the five regions of uh, KZN will not participate because they didn't pass um, their processes mm. in preparation so, for, so for three conference. Three out of five. Three out of five, I think. Yeah. But they were going to attend. Mm -hmm. Three regions were not going to participate, yeah. but they were going to attend as uh, to be in conference, participate in conference, but they were not going to vote. Yes. So in that, with the success of this interdict, it is a clear indication that the branches are not working. The other factor is the leadership there. We've got factors, the three factors is K JZ, is Zihle, is uh, Senzom Kunu, and there is Zulim Kiza also on the other hand. When the fight first started after um, Sikhle was, uh, Zigalala was elected the provincial chairperson before the disbandment, there, were, there was a strong factor of the Senzom Kunu factor that believed he had won, he was supposed to have won the, the, the conference, mm. although they also did not participate, the people that supported, um, uh, that were supporting the Senzom Kunu uh, factor. So with all this, these figures are very strong in KZN, and Sikhlesi Galala is seen to be closer to former president uh, Jacob Zuma and taking instructions from him. Although towards conference, they sat down with the factor that was seen to be close to uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa. They, hence, they had agreed that Mabuya Kulu should come in as deputy uh, 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 chairperson and Sikhle must still be the provincial chair. Mm. And people in the know, the sources say that with that deal, President, former President Jacob Zuma did call Bosikle to advise them not to agree to that deal. Okay. Now, this does this in fighting the elections. I like referring to them because every day counts, right? Mm. Within the next 12 months, elections have got to take place. So whatever happens at the provinces has a bearing on what happens ultimately with the national elections that are going to be held. So how then does this affect the preparations of the ANC overall? ANC will be affected. Uh, it may win the province, it may not win the province. And I like making these examples that people from KwaZulu Natal, they like threatening us with violence. It's the only province where there are political killings. Although I think in provinces like Free State, there is one there, and also in the Eastern Cape, there maybe have been one incident or something. But KZN is the only province where we are, is like we must have a Zulu at top six of the ANC, we must have Zulus in cabinet, we must have Zulus there, and so on. People should not forget that former president Tabumbeki, when he was leading ANC, he did win with two thirds majority without KwaZulu Natal being governed by the ANC. So it's possible for ANC to, to, to win the elections and even do better without KZN. ANC, KZN, yes, is a factor. Uh, ANC will want to find itself in power 
and it is sad because they're still complaining about the metros that they have lost. Unfortunately, KZN cannot be allowed to hold the country at ransom or well, even the ANC. I suppose that would be the case at national level. But mm -hmm. when you come, when you go to the to the ground now, the grassroots, the whole point of winning political power is to run or form a government, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. Yes. Now, when there's infighting within a political party, as is the case now in KZN, it affects the performance of the government, even in KwaZulu-Natal itself, doesn't it? It does, but the, the, the fact of the matter is if uh, ANC can't sort itself out, if President Jacob Zuma continues with all these groupings that continue to support him, he went to court, was it on Friday? On, yeah, where Friday we saw morning. Faith Mutambi, where we saw Supra Mahuma Pelu, where we saw uh, Kalni House, where we saw uh, the priest from uh, KZN and, and so Cloud on. Yes. And, 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 and uh, former SABC CEO mm. Claudi was there also, Claudi Mutweni. If they continue to rally behind him, there will be instability in KZN. It's a case whereby even Zueli Mukise will not be able to sort it out. Senzo Mkunu, Sikhesi Galal. And the effect will be they will lose the province and they will lose power. Unfortunately, our leaders live in a bubble. They don't read what is happening in the ground. They all fight to be there. But when they are up there, they forget how they got into power and the importance of holding on to power. They fight. How do you allow someone who allegedly killed his own mother and lied and said, my mom has died in order to cash um, an insurance colony house to lead a campaign? W do you think people are stupid? They don't realize that you just want to hold on to power at all costs. Mm. So that will be the, unfortunately, ANC will lose KZN. Well, that's in the case of KZN. But we've seen people rise up in protest action in the Northwest, for mm -hmm. instance, and ultimately the premier being forced to step down. The premier happens to be the chairperson of the ANC anyway in the Northwest. As we speak, there's no government because it's uh, placed under administration, most of the departments there. So what about that situation then? The Northwest situation also is a bit, um, it's complex because if you are the chairperson according to the ANC constitution, you will, you will power. So what um, the national government did, uh, took power away from the province and now they control key um, uh, uh, departments that will render Supra Mahuma Pelu useless. What is important is for them to go look at the recommendations that has been made by um, the task team that is led by Nkosaza Nadlamini Zuma and implement. In that way, they will control. Supra will be there, will be head. I understand he wants to continue to sit in the in the legislature to be an MPL. They will just be there. He's, 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 they are as good as uh, gone. Even the acting premier now reports directly to the national task team. So if the task team can implement properly, I think the problems in, in, in the Northwest will be eliminated because the people on the ground will see that the ANC government is, uh, is working. So what is the state of affairs, politically speaking, within the ANC at this time? I mean, we know that the current president won by a small margin uh, for him to become president of the ANC and automatically became president, not automatically, but after the stepping down mm, of mm, President mm. Zuma, had to become the president of the country. So what is he working with currently uh, to run the country, number one? Number two, all the other developments, we haven't touched on other provinces, but there's a lot that's going on there. How are these developments affecting the ANC's preparations for the national elections? You know, I think um, Cyril is taking his time. People say he's a negotiator. I don't think he's a fool. I think he, he sees the difficulties that he has. And having difficulties doesn't mean he's a weak president. He needs to send a memo to these people. He hasn't sent them a memo to say, I'm in charge, and these are the rules. The day he does that, they will understand they are history and they are weak. That's where the problem is. You think it's because he hasn't really communicated he, he with them? He hasn't communicated to them to say, this is what I want and this is where I am. He's taking things step by step. Remember he came in, SAEs were not functioning. Some departments were not functioning. So there is a lot of things that were, were, were not functioning and had to put people strategically. For instance, people are asking, why do you have Batabilet Lamin? Why do you still have Batabilet Lamin as a minister? She is the president of the Women's League. The Women's League would have, would, would have complained in the ANC if uh, he had uh, completely uh, taken mm. her out of cabinet. You've got Nomvula Mugonyanu who collapsed uh, the Department of uh, Water Affairs, whose corporate head uh, said publicly that uh, doesn't understand 
why uh, Cyril Ramaphosa made um, her a president. And you can see at times some people are still with Jacob Zuma, especially the two ministers that I've just um, mentioned. But she, he had to because of the women issue in mm. the ANC. So I think he's working, working slowly, but in the work that he does, all these people that think they have been in power, they continue to undermine him. He needs to write them a letter and tell them that I'm in charge. Mwipuni Malefane, thank you very much for talking to us. I appreciate it. That's the Sowetan's political news editor, Mwipuni Malefane, analyzing the developments within the ANC. And that's all we had for you this evening. Until next time, good night to you. <laughs>